Hello everyone and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3. I'm Lord Forend, this time with a guide on how to survive Partition Inheritance, also known as Gavelkind. So when you start out the game, if you don't start in a later start date, you're going to start with the very, very annoying inheritance of um, Gavelkind. Basically, it's going to go into... Confederate partition. Whenever you die, basically all your lands will be divided among the children about as equally as can be. And uh, more annoyingly, um, new titles will be created for children if you can form them. So um, just pointing this out here, this is a game I've been playing on my own. I created the Custom Kingdom of Britannia, so I figured this would be a good thing to show you because I am still stuck with a different form of partition. So before we get into it, I'm just going to quickly run through the different um, different succession stuff here because this is this is important to know. And a lot of people looking at this wall of text can be very confusing. So Confederate Partition you start out with, it gives you a couple benefits. But the key is down here, new titles may be created for younger heirs. So basically when I held this land here, even though I had only formed the Kingdom of Britannia upon... Uh, this ruler, well, this ruler's father's grandfather's death, England was formed, as was Britannia, and I had to fight to reunify the two kingdoms under one. And when my king dies here, because he's got um, more than one male heir, most of his lands are going to be divided. This guy will receive England, this guy will receive Britannia, and several other ones. Now, how to survive this? Well, the first thing to realize is the easiest way to not have to deal with this is to move out of this. Partition here, it says titles will be evenly divided, will be divided equally among your children. The big key is new titles, new titles will not be created for younger heirs under partition. And then under high partition, the lion's share will go to the heir, the rest will be divided among the children. So these are important ones to try and get to. So you're stuck under Confederate partition until you can get partition. And how you get partition is you get hereditary rule in the second early medieval age. The next reform comes in the high medieval age where you have heraldry, you get the high partition, and house seniority law. And then in the uh, late medieval, you will get primogeniture, which is definitely the best succession form. Even ultima gentia is pretty good as well. Um, what those do later on is they send all the titles to either your un young oldest or youngest child. And then there's house seniority, which gives it to the oldest member of the house. I don't particularly recommend this one because the oldest people tend to die a lot, which means your vassals will have very little time to get rid of that short reign penalty. So basically, the point is you want to try and reform as fast as you can. So how do you survive this? Sorry for taking so long to get to this point. So you'll notice right here in, this is one duchy here. I'm sorry, wrong button. East CX. Um, we've got seven titles here. I don't have any titles outside of there. Just to point that out so you guys won't get confused. So when this guy dies, let's look at his direct heir here. His direct heir will inherit the kingdom of Britannia. The petty kingdom of that duchy, East Siax, and the earldom of Middle Siax, which is basically this. He'll also, I believe, pick up um, a couple of these minor uh, duchies here. Uh, sorry, baronies. Let me just double check that. Uh, who's the. Heir? These names are a little confusing. Cedric. Uh, I don't even know how to say that nun, the son of the previous one. Um, Yes, he will pick up those ones. He will not pick up any of the other ones in the capital duchy, though, which is annoying. So basically, he's going to get London here, and these two baronies, and then the kingdom, and that's about it. The rest of these will all go to his brothers. Now, I am unable to get rid of the Kingdom of England. If I had gotten rid of the Kingdom of England, which, by the way, I can't afford to destroy, but this is important. You can destroy titles. So if you destroy all your kingdom rank titles or your empire rank titles and you just leave yourself one at the highest level, one empire, one kingdom, for example, both of those will go to your heir. Now, I don't mention usually that you can split empires, mostly because most people don't own enough land to form two separate empires, um, but it can happen. The usual case is kingdoms. So once you move away from... 
partition the confederate partition to partition that is when it is much safer to expand really you shouldn't try to expand too too much under confederate partition unless you want to deal with succession wars partition is going to be much more useful so how does one deal with this well there are a great amount of ways to do so first one is your capital county and your count any baronies within it are going to be inherited by your eldest child unless there's no other land outside of your capital barony uh, capital county for these baronies to stay within the county but the key is your capital county alone which in this case is london will stay within the family or within the air specifically so what does this mean this means you should put all your high level buildings that you can in this one province before you start upgrading outside of it and then you should also upgrade your baronies within it before you start upgrading your counties and other baronies outside of your capital county <laughs> kind of confusing but basically these are much more likely to go to your heir than these are however these are much more likely to go to your heir than provinces scattered out here so once you've done that this should give you first off a numerical advantage which is the key it's always better to have more troops than people you're fighting because fighting you might be so when my king my grandfather to my current king died this land was split actually among a male heir and two daughter and two female heirs because his heir had died his he only had three daughters and one of them had died but had had a son first so it got really weird and confusing but to su suffice to say i didn't own any of this land so how did i get it back well that is where the power of hooks comes in so let's see do i have any hooks just so i can show you guys hooks i hold okay here we go i hold a hook on this guy what does this mean this just means if i go to revoke title i can say i want this one and you see it's active tyranny if I do a hook, well, it's a little bit different, but the um, success rate down here goes up. So what I what you can do is if you can get hooks on people who own land within your capital duchy, you can revoke them at usually a penalty. But if you don't, you can just revoke them. Uh, but the odds of them going to open rebellion are much higher. In my case, I managed to get hooks and managed to revoke the land. However, I will point out it still does cause tyranny so you do have to be careful with your other vassals i almost sparked an entire civil war doing so so now the question is how do you get these hooks well the easiest way is to go down the intrigue tree which is where the intrigue comes in relatively handy if you go down the schemer tree um first off you should probably take the skullduggery focus here to get the highest amount of intrigue because a high intrigue score is going to help the most with this you want to do this one truth is relative enables fabricate hook scheme secrets may also fabricate hooks this means <laughs> this means you can basically click on somebody like this guy go down here and under hostile schemes there will be one called fabricate hook and it takes time it's like your normal scheme you'll get different events to support it and then at the end there's a chance of it being really good moderately good or bad um any hook works to revoke it but the higher hook the more likely they'll accept your demand like if i talked to this guy and said i just want to revoke your duchy he might accept but if i used a hook it'd be much higher um i actually i probably would be able to show you on this one let's double check this oh it could make him only hold titles without land no i can't show it with that one that's unfortunate uh, but it goes up by like 40% usually. And then it's just a matter of risk and consolidation. Uh, there's another way to do it, but I recommend it the way I mentioned. You can also take this guy here, your spy master, which in this case, this is the worst spy master I've ever seen. Uh, I have to replace him in my game. And you can put him on find secrets, and you want to put it obviously on the capital of the person you're scheming against. And there's a chance they will find a secret against the count or countess or duck duke or duchess or even king or queen uh it's much lower it's much less likely so you want to use the intrigue stuff so basically you want to focus as much of your development development on top of money in your capital capital county and then capital baronies 
Um, you'll notice here that most of these buildings here, with one exception, are military buildings. But this is because uh, I want the levy. So when this guy dies and his land is split apart, I want this province here, London, to contribute as much levies and stuff as a couple of these other ones. I know levies aren't the end all of the game, but they certainly make it much easier to um, revoking provinces and also stopping rebellions. So outside of this, um, I haven't been doing the best job of this, but outside of this is where I have been concentrating a bit more on generating taxes. Uh, most of my provinces out here, you'll see have at least two gold generating ones, whereas my capital just, my capital has two, but it really should only have one. Um, and then these baronies should also be gold generators as well, because then when I keep them, I'll have more gold. So the thing to do, to survive Gavelkind is get prepared to revoke titles, scheme against people. Other options are, if the person you're going against does not have any children, you can try and murder them or imprison them. I recommend murder. If, they've, if their direct heir is you, which will be told to you up here, you are first in line to inherit this county. So if we click on this, notice that this is my character's mother. We go to her and we do murder and we succeed which is why you'll still want to do Intrigue. Um, and we managed to kill her. Uh, the title will immediately pass back to my ruler. Now, it can be difficult if they have children because then you have to get rid of the children as well, which is why I recommend the Fabricating Cloak to revoke titles. Um, you can just outright revoke the title anyway, but it's going to most likely start a war, and more importantly, it's going to have other vassals form factions against you. Uh, but it's pretty easy to reconsolidate. I've had to reconsolidate this duchy three times now. Um, it's going to happen again when this guy dies. Uh, if I can get to it, I'm going to try and destroy the title of Kingdom of England. Even though there's a huge uh, penalty for it, it will mean at the death of this ruler, this will all stay within the Kingdom of Britannia rather than splitting into two separate kingdoms, England and Britannia. Okay, so that's basically how to survive Gavelkind. Um, there's not a huge amount of trick to it. It just involves revoking titles, which is something most people don't know how to do. And it also involves scheming. So you can also imprison people and then um, kind of threaten them in their dungeon using your, you know, your prisoner interactions here where you can you know, negotiate release. You can gain hooks on people and then use the hooks to revoke lands. Just be aware that they're going to lose an opinion of you there and then revoke it again. Uh, I'm going to go into hooks and stuff probably more in an espionage video, which is why I'm not going into great, de great, great detail on them now. But basically, that's how you survive a confederate partition, the whole gavel kind inheritance stuff. Concentrate all your power in one duchy. And then concentrate even further into one county, hopefully containing some baronies. Build up your capital as high as you can in terms of levies and troops. The other thing to do, and I, I should have mentioned this earlier, is try and save up a lot of gold when your ruler dies. That way you can afford to upkeep your army because your income is going to drop probably about two-thirds or more. And so then you're going to have to fight wars and do hooks and stuff to regain it. And you need the gold to support the troops or to hire mercenaries if you need it. So that is a base guide on how to survive Gavelkind, Federate Partition, and just general partition. You want to reform your succession as soon as possible. That's basically the conclusion of all of this. The other one thing you can do, and I should mention this, although it's not really surviving it as it's avoiding it, you can go under somebody and you can disinherit them. Sounds cruel. Uh, it does cost you this whole renowned, but it does remove the person from the inheritance. So if you see you're going to get a split, I could disinherit all of these, and then this guy should inherit everything. Anyway, that is it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully this helps you. Feel free to ask any questions and check out my other guides. Bye for now.